Dear chess friend, you are about to see the white player preparing a regression trap by means of a double step. It certainly resonates with my personal taste. e4, c6, knight c3, d5, knight f3. White is opting for the two knights variation against the Karo Khan. This was championed by Bobby Fischer back in the days and today is considered as a very reliable weapon for white. Black has to solve some problems, I would say. Now in the game we saw bishop g4, which I consider to be the most solid line for black. But before we go into that, let's have a look at the alternatives. A decent move is d takes e4, knight e4, knight f6. Black intends to steer the game to the knight f6 variation of the main line. So if white now took on f6, ef6, we would see this very line if white would come up with d4. It would then be a mere transposition of moves. But very often <clears throat> the white players try to deviate and play queen e2, setting up a nice trap. But that's not the regression trap, right? The trap is quite simple after knight bd7. Uh, the game is over after this nice smothered maid. That's a well-known opening trap. But I think uh, on a higher level white isn't really hoping for that. Black usually answers <clears throat> knight takes e4, queen e4 and now black has again some choices. Uh, knight e7 would be one but better I guess is queen d5 and the best move here should be queen a5 intending bishop f5 and black is very close to equality here. The other move knight f6 is supposed to be bad after um, a novelty which happened in the year 2015. That's a bit of a pity because I as black would personally love to play this move as it leads to imbalanced positions. So this move uh, before the novelty was discovered gave black decent uh, winning chances, right? This is always a problem with black. Um, you want to equalize, so you want to play an opening of a high quality, but you don't want to have a dull position where you don't have any winning chances at all. Now after e5, knight e4, knight e2, Black is faced with a threat of d3. That's why queen b6, threatening checkmate on f2 is necessary. White is forced to play d4. e6, knight g3. Now white intends to challenge the knight on e4 by bishop d3. So black must um, engage in counterplay here, c5. But white now can ignore this attack on the d-pawn by playing bishop d3. Knight takes g3, so far so good. And before 2015 everybody played h takes g3. And white has an okay position after that. But now comes the novelty, f takes g3. It was played by an amateur 2015 and then picked up by strong players 2017 and then the position here was not really playable anymore for black. Let's see what can happen now. C takes d4. So <clears throat> it's a bit counterintuitive to play this for white at first glance. So first you recapture away from the center by playing f takes g3 and then you leave this pawn on d4 hanging and the e5 pawn is isolated, right? But all this is of no great importance as chess mostly is about peace activity and white has quite a lot of this. Castles, knight c6, so the d4 pawn is quite safe in black's hands. But uh, the question is where is black playing here? Now white, by overprotecting the e-pawn, is threatening already knight g5, which has to be prevented by h6. Now black himself has a threat 
in the shape of knight b4 in order to get hold of that bishop. So white plays a3, preventing just that. Bishop d7, b4. You see, the move a3 also had another intention, a more active one. So white is grabbing space on the queen side, discouraging black from castling there. Bishop e7, bishop d2. This position is clearly better for white because black's king doesn't really have a safe place to go to. Casting queenside is playable, but black is then faced by white's pawn advancing, right? By a4, a5. This could be prepared maybe by rook b1. So this is not really comfortable for black. But even worse than that would be castling short because after g4 and turning g5, white is already winning. So this line knight f6 is something you, you should leave your fingers from, right? In our game, we saw bishop g4. Very solid move. Black wants to play e6 and before that happens, he brings out the bishop. Now h3 is the point of white's play. Black is now faced with a, a dilemma, right? He can either give up his bishop pair or play bishop h5, but bishop h5 is clearly worse. Black actually is forced to give up his bishop pair. After bishop h5, white continues with ed5, cd5, and now the best move is g4. Very aggressive play. Bishop g6, knight e5, knight c6, and now d4 is best. There's already the threat h4, or first bishop b5, and after rook c8, then h4 in play. So if white was to move again, he would already be winning by playing h4. The bishop g6 is then under pressure, and of course h6 is not possible because of knight takes g6 and you would have to recapture with the f-pawn that which would be quite a disaster. So this is a clearly better position for white. Hence bishop takes f3 is forced. I know we all love our bishop pair but there are some positions where we are forced to give it up and it's actually not that big of a problem for black. Now the most common move is e6 but also knight f6 is uh, playable. Very often um, both moves transpose to each other if black follows up with e6 later. For instance, if now bishop e2, then e6, and we would have this transposition. In this game, white played d4, and black captured here on e4. Now white made a mistake. The best move for white is now not to recapture, but to first protect the d4 pawn, and recapture one move later. White then would have some space advantage and the bishop pair, but black's position is very solid and I would I would talk about near equality in this case. So it's, it's not a big problem for black to play this position. But in the game, white recaptured outright and now the best reply would have been queen takes d4, just grabbing this pawn after knight f6, ef6, the engine says equality. White has a bishop pair and of course um, black's pawn structure is a bit devalued on the king side due to the double pawns but a pawn is a pawn so uh, this roughly uh, balances uh, white's bishop pair this extra pawn there on f6. Um, in the game black took on e4 a question mark because after queen takes e4 knight d7 bishop d3 we can talk about plus equal in this position well that's not the end of the world for black that is true but still white has some opening advantage now after knight f6 white made a mistake however he should play now or should have played queen e3 or Queen e5 and after e6 castles bishop d6, queen e2 castles rook d1 with a plus equal position. More space and the two bishops. So that would have been best for white. Instead white played queen h4. 
That's a mistake because the queen is exposed on this square, believe it or not. e6, castles. Now black made a mistake by playing queen to c7. Instead he should have played bishop d6. Let's say rook d1, h6, that's a very strong move. And let's assume white is now committing the following mistake, c3. After bishop f4, we would have equality here. So this is an equal position already for black. Let's say white plays a nondescript move c3. Now rook g8 sees black having the advantage. As you can see, g5 uh, is uh, in the cards at, at some moment. So maybe black wants to first castle queenside. So play by playing, let's say, queen to e7 or c7 and castling and then g5 would be a threat to white's queen followed maybe by g4 attacking also the king this is a better position here for black white has to play f4 and after um, bishop c7 followed by queen d6 castling queenside we see black having a slight advantage so black is better um, like half a pawn so black has half a pawn advantage here so instead of playing bishop d6, black played queen c7, which was a mistake. Now comes a very strong move. White now is initiating the um, regression trap. He has to set up the conditions for this to happen by playing bishop f4, extremely strong. Normally, you wouldn't play this move because after the obvious move bishop d6 bishop takes d6 queen takes d6 you would have helped black you know in a position with the bishop pair of course as white having the bishop pair you want to retain it you don't want to easy black's task here by um, destroying your bishop pair right so normally bishop f4 would be a mistake, but here it does work. Actually now black should have moved away with his queen, which didn't happen. Queen b6 is the best move and after bishop e5 white has a slight advantage. In the game however, black answered bishop f4 with the normal move bishop d6. This was played in three of the four games actually. And now comes the point, but this point was only seen in one of the three games. The point is our topical move, bishop h6, attacking the pawn g7. Now what black cannot do is castling, because after bishop takes g7, king takes, check, of course white is regaining the piece and then having an attack and an extra pawn, so this is completely lost for black. What else could black do after bishop h6? Black could defend the g7 pawn, but white would be winning a pawn nevertheless after bishop g7. I mean, rook takes g7, queen f6 is obvious, so maybe black gets enough compensation for the pawn. He wants to castle queenside and then attack in the g-file, so this has to be checked, right? Bishop h6. Bishop e7 preparing to castle queenside, queen e4 castling queenside, and now after bishop d2 the engine says clear advantage for white. Black is not having enough compensation for his pawn. That means that after bishop h6 the only move is bishop to f8. Now we have a freezer kind of position. So the pawn here is frozen and also is the bishop uh, for the time being because there is pressure on the knight f6. Of course, white could also have played the freezer move right now here. Instead of bishop f4, he could have played bishop h6, but then it would have been black's move. Now, as black just played bishop f8, it's white's move. So by, let's go back, by playing bishop f4, luring the bishop to d6 we gained a tempo we have this position now 
we, we gained the move bishop h6 free of charge, right? And now it's our move again. So the game, white played c3, that's a good move, stabilizing the d4 pawn and preparing b4. Black now is in the freezer kind of situation. He <clears throat> cannot castle uh, kingside, obviously. He has to castle queenside, which gives white some nice attacking chances. And the move c3 is a good preparation for the subsequent b2, b4. So castling happened and now b4 came. This is a plus equal position. So white has now something to play for. He can try to attack by playing b4, b5 later. Now black's best move would have been knight d5, attacking not only the c3 pawn but also threatening g takes h6. So bishop d2 forced, bishop d6, queen e4, check, king h1, bishop f4. Black wants to exchange bishops, after which he also would gain control over the square f4. Normally white should try to avoid the exchange of uh, uh, bishops in a bishop pair situation like this. So bishop e1 looks a bit ugly but is the best move and actually gives white a slight advantage here. White has some attacking chances on uh, the queen side. But instead black played the move rook d5. He didn't play knight d5, he played rook d5, obviously threatening rook h5, winning the bishop on h6. Now white should have played bishop e3, h6, intending g5, f4, preventing that. And in this case, white has a clear advantage with his two bishops and space advantage and attacking chances on the queen side. So a4, b5 later would be an idea. This position is relevant because it shows that the concept white unfolded in this game, preparing the regression trap by the double step, bishop f4, bishop h6, well, it could have succeeded, but he played otherwise. He played the move bishop g5. It's not a big crime to play this move, but by doing so, white is giving away some chunk of his advantage. Bishop e7, a4, so white is going for the attack, h6, but now has to part with his bishop pair. Takes, takes. Now there came a mistake, queen e4. Better was queen g4, or pinning the pawn on e6. So now we have a situation with opposite colored bishops. Let me drop a remark to that. Everybody knows that generally the presence of opposite colored bishop um, increases the drawing chances of the defender, right? You can even draw with a minus pawn very often, sometimes even with two minus pawns, if it's a pure ending with opposite colored bishops, right? The thing is that in an attacking situation, so a position with opposite side castle kings, the presence of opposite colored bishop enhances uh, the, the winning chances of the attacker because the defender cannot neutralize uh, um, the bishop of the attacker. And the attacker then, of course, tries to attack on the square where he has an extra piece, an extra bishop, right? So this is such a situation, but it's still not lost for black here. So uh, the whole black can have still very high hopes by playing, for instance, king d8, evacuating his king, intending king e7. These, these moves, however, are difficult to spot in a game, right? So if black makes a mistake like h5, for instance, queen f3, and now tries to do um, e5 to, to revive the bishop f6 or activate the bishop f6, uh, after b5, white would be winning, actually. You see there's now pressure on the light squares and I think the idea is just to play bishop e4 and you see what is happening now on the long diagonal. So this is a good example for 
the attacker enjoying the presence of opposite colored bishops. In our game, however, white made the mistake and played the queen to e4. And now black could have equalized by e5, which didn't happen. e5, bishop c4, uh, rook g7. e5 is important to break up this structure here, d4, c3, anim animating the bishop f6, right? Getting counterplay going. By opening up the center, black then would um, keep white's forces busy, thus preventing a pawn storm on the queen side. After d5, in order to keep the bishop passive on f6, king b8 takes, takes, exchanging queens, black would be equal. There's nothing to play for anymore for white. So this would have been the correct move. Instead, black played a5. a5 was a mistake, but now white countered with Yet another mistake. He could have played rook ab1 with an advantage more than half a pawn and some nice attacking chances in the b-file, as you can see. Instead, white kind of blundered, I mean positionally. He played b5, question mark. And now after c5, the position is equal. In the end, white lost the game after 56 moves. The rest of the game is not really relevant anymore. But the first part of the game was quite attractive for me. I hope you share my taste and like this game. Um, comment if you did so. I see you in the next video. Have a good day.